How's it going guys? Welcome back to Fraud on the Telly. In today's video, we're breaking out everything that happened in Critical Role Campaign 3, Episode 39. An episode in which the party claimed their airship. Chetney goes full werewolf as well. Imogen's mother is alive? As always, if you enjoyed the video and learned something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out some of our other Critical Role and D&D content. Let's just get right into it, shall we? Our episode begins post Bell's Hells, finding Estaros's body after Estaros is encountered with Otahan Thule. The party inform Lady Mistress Ashardry to where she sends the two green seekers from way back earlier on in the campaign to come and question Bell's Hells, taking them back to Estaros's house, eventually trying to find out if they are guilty of this crime or not. We get introduced to a strange cleric of the Raven Queen. She's like super doll-like, creepy, almost not human, hard to tell. Very strange lady named Weaver, I believe was her name. Her and Laudna share this creepy girl vibe moment, but ultimately she is there to cast speak with dead and communicate with Estros's body, finding out who murdered him. Estros responds dead via the spell that it was the legend of the peaks, Otahan Thule. That gives us a little lore related to the Stratos Throne War, the Stratos Throne being an area um, in Marquette, specifically where Imogen grew up, which is very interesting. Otahan is then viewed as a hero by the people of the Stratos Throne for her endeavors in uh, the war, but to many of those on the other side of the war, she is viewed as an evil criminal, a boogeyman almost for her presumed not very nice actions within the war. Very curious to see what other information the party will eventually dig up on this war and Otahan's early life. Because I think that's going to give us a lot of information on just like what is going on with this character and her links to Ruidus. Before they sleep for the night after having their names cleared, uh, FCG examines the strange poison that was found on the blade um, that potentially killed Estaros, as this is the poison that was also used on Orem's uh, husband that prevents uh, those from being killed with it from being revived. He rolls a nat 20, but doesn't gleam any information, which kind of made some people angry in chat, but Matt says that this is just something you've never encountered before. Now, here is when I had a spark of inspiration now i'm sure that someone's already come up with this theory before but i haven't seen it yet but it just kind of hit me like a ton of bricks i think how this poison works is that when someone dies from the poison or a blade with the poison their soul is not taken past the divine gate into wherever it goes hell heaven whatever realm that the soul goes to instead it goes to ruidus and the reason why they can't be revived is the soul cannot pass through that divine gate now this could be completely wrong there's not a ton of evidence to suggest this but it did kind of just hit me like a ton of bricks and it just makes sense let me know in the comments down below do you think that i'm on to something here with how this strange ruidus poison seems to work the next day the group claim their airship it's going to be an 11 day journey to eos to which they are going to pass over um, a big stretch of jungle to which the werewolf tribe that Chetney wants to visit is in. So they're probably going to do a stop along the way. It's, we have to remember it's 11 days to Eos and the Apogee Solstice is about four weeks away. So we really are on a timer here. Unfortunately, a dust storm hits the party as they're traveling, but no one falls overboard. Even more unfortunate than that, though, is that evening there is a ruinous flare in the sky, seeming Imogen into a dream to where she sees her mother who turns to her saying you need to run we flash over to chetney on the airship if we remember a couple episodes back chetney had a strange memory to which the light of ruidus seemed to have some kind of effect on him like years back or something and asks him to row a wisdom saving throw he rolls really low and suddenly the ruidus moon infects chetney forcing him to go wolf as his eyes glow red and he begins attacking the party eventually though they managed to get him calmed down as we're transported back to imogen's dream her mother vanishing imogen not knowing what to do as this red storm coalesces around her she decides to fly straight up heading towards the moon as suddenly the glow of the moon fades and imogen plummets down to the ground as she strikes it she wakes up upon waking imogen is shaken especially having this strange um communication with her mother so she decides to send a message to her casting sending 
to which her mother responds. And that's where our episode ends. There's been a ton of mystery surrounding Imogen's backstory, as well as the relationship to her mother. Is her mother even alive? Her mother being taken in and studied, if we remember, um, somewhere at the university for being a ruinous born person as well as her mother constantly appearing in her dreams there's something weird going on here with imogen's mother obviously her connections to ruidus where the heck even is she so many questions curious to see what answers we will get what does imogen's mother know about ruidus otahan and the coming apogee solstice I imagine she knows more than we might think she does. As well, we got to see Ruidus' effect on Chetney and his werewolf form, something that was very much teased, and now we finally got to see. And that's going to be some problems for Exandria. Imagine werewolves around Exandria being suddenly controlled by the moon of Ruidus, forcing them to go berserk, basically, on the people. This potentially, maybe in the coming Apogee Solstice, could allow for Ruidus, and if there's any gods within that moon, to mind control the werewolves of Exandria, potentially in this upcoming war for Exandria that I see happening. This episode was much more of a kind of chiller episode, which is, was bound to happen after the crazy events uh, of the last few weeks. But it is a little disappointing because, we, as we've said several times now, there's only like four or five episodes of Critical Role left in 2022 because there are the two or three um, Return to Mighty Nine episodes that we have upcoming in November. As well, if you plan on watching those, make sure you go watch our uh, Everything We Know About Ukatoa, What is Ukatoa video where we prep you uh, with all of the knowledge that we have from lore, uh, dating all the way back to the Calamity and then the events of Campaign 2 about Ukatoa. Go watch the video. But yeah, this episode was slightly disappointing. As disappointing as I guess a Critical Role episode can be because I enjoy it nonetheless. But I was really hoping for maybe a little bit more. But it seems now that we have our airship and we're going on a bit of air travel. Uh, possibly a bit of downtime in uh, the jungle with the werewolves. The plot is going to continue to move. As we said, um, the Apogee Solstice is in like four weeks. So in game time, who knows how long that could take. I mean, four weeks is roughly 30 days, and at the rate we're going, we maybe get one to two days per episode, so that means it's basically going to be somewhere between 10 and 15 episodes, unless there's a time skip, before our Apogee Solstice. It really puts some things into perspective, huh, as well. I think that uh, this upcoming Apogee Solstice is just kind of the beginning for the greater arc of Campaign 3, but hey, I could be completely wrong and i guess at the end of the day only the dice will know let me know your thoughts in the comments down below did you enjoy this episode what are your theories with ruidus as well as imogen's mother and the strange poison that otahan uses to prevent resurrection do you think that my theory is right are we on the right track and as well are you disappointed that there's only a few episodes left of critical role in 2022 but hey, at least we get a little return to Mighty Nine. As always, if you enjoyed the video and learned something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I hope to see you guys in the next video. As always, stay safe out there. Till next time, peace of Aru.